And so I want to show you how to calculate the distance modulus and the distance using Google Sheets instead of having to use a calculator and manually enter it in. And uh, hopefully you'll appreciate the reason this is so powerful in just one second. So for the distance modulus, I'm looking for the apparent magnitude minus the absolute magnitude. And I can calculate this using a formula in Google Sheets by selecting the cell I want to enter a formula into. And then either I can come up here and click the formula bar, or I can simply um, have my, my um, cursor in that cell and then click enter. Um, in order for Google Sheets to know that you're about to enter a formula, you need to click equals. And then you can take the apparent magnitude cell that you want to calculate with, little m here, and subtract the absolute magnitude cell that you want. Click enter and check it out. Google Sheets will uh, politely ask you if you would like to enter all of the values in that column. And I would like to, so I'll go ahead and do that. So now, as you can see, um, each of these calculations is pulling from the row of data that is appropriate. And I only had to enter the formula once. And now if I want to enter, um, I don't know, 1,773 more pieces of data, then I could do so and calculate the distance modulus of all of them um, by grabbing this little blue square and just dragging it down over all the rows that I'm interested in. So. That's how you enter a formula, and this is a, a nice simple starting point. Um, and now I'll show you a little bit of a more complicated example um, that you need to be very careful sometimes when you enter a formula to pay attention to order of operations. So in the distance calculation, our formula is 10 to the power of our distance modulus m minus m plus 5, all of that divided by 5. So let me show you how to enter that formula. Again, I'll start by typing equals so that Google Sheets knows there's a formula coming. And then I go 10 to the, that's the shift six, the caret symbol. And now I'll give myself a couple of parentheses. I want my distance modulus m minus m, got it, plus five, that whole thing divided by five. And now my final parenthesis makes sure that all of this is going into my exponent instead of um, if you forget this last parenthesis, then this divided by five, um, it'll only take 10 to the e2 plus five and then it'll divide that result by five. So the parentheses here are really important. You wanna explicitly tell Google Sheets what to do first in parentheses and then what to do next in the next parentheses. And then all of that is in your exponent. So now I'll go ahead and click equals now that my formula looks correct. And again, super handy, calculate the result for all of my columns. Um, I have this formatted so that it's showing the result in scientific notation. If I want to change that, I can go to more formats here, or I can go to format number and choose some other format. Um, in this case, it looks like most of the distances that we came up with fall into a fairly similar range. So around 60 to 75,000 parsecs. Um, so whether or not you prefer that number in standard form or scientific notation, up to you. All right, so what questions do you have about using Google Sheets for calculations? It seems like every group was um, successful in finding the period apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude from what I could see. So good job, everyone. So um, in this lab, most of the um, star distances that we found came out to around 60,000 parsecs, somewhere within that, that ballpark, right? So that's 60 kiloparsecs. But not every star was at that particular distance. Um, and there might be sources of error based on how you did the lab, based on the type of data that you had access to that could make those numbers you know, slightly more, slightly less. So answer one of these two questions, either what do you think is the biggest source of uncertainty in the distance measurements that we just made, or um, what other questions came up as you did the lab? All right, lots of similar um, sentiments coming up here. So yeah, the graphs that we had were kind of fuzzy. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but it seemed like the, the two 
bars at either side didn't actually line up completely, neither did the time bars. I wish I could find this raw data. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Then I could make my own plots and then you wouldn't have this source of uncertainty. Um, let's see, some other things other than just the difficulty of reading off the graph where maybe that things in space are moving. So how do we calculate the distance to a moving target? That's an interesting question we'll come back to later in the class. Yeah, it seems like mostly just the data estimation was the hardest part. Yep, and then because you're using this data and entering it in um, to future formulae, then any errors that you make early in the process, they just propagate through the entire calculation. So that's a challenge too. Awesome. All right, so I hope you got a little bit of experience for what it would have been like to be um, some of the early astronomers who were using this type of data to actually calculate the distance to the Large Magellanic Cloud, the Small Magellanic Cloud, Andromeda. So this is exactly the type of thing that they did, though unfortunately without the aid of spreadsheets, everything was manual. Fun times. <laughs>